And Grizz here, second video of the day. Uh, I know it's been a while since I started these little leafs, but there was an interruption uh, here in the complex that I had to sort of deal with for three or four days or so. Of course, everything sort of got put on hold. So anyway, we're back at it again today, full blast. I'm a little behind, but uh, I want to show you guys. I did the big uh, terracotta one. I'll show you at the end here. Um, I'm not going to speed up this video. I want you to see it like in real time, how long this takes to do for, for the color wash, the second wash. Um, started off with, actually I'm going to go backwards. Some people have asked me before, I've gotten a message or two, do you paint the back? I wait until after I'm all finished because you'll get runs curling down under the leaf. So afterwards I flip it over after a couple of days and I'll paint the back all up. Anyways, so using uh, latex acrylic paint, it's the Bearer Ultra Premium that I used. It's a color that I came up with. It's called Summon Substance. All that is is the name of a hosta at my house that I really like the, the leaf color. So it's a, kind of a really cool lime green color. Um, if you go on YouTube and you look about color washes and stuff, they always they say always, always start with the light color base and then go to dark. But I think like Guns and I think the same is a to uh, rules. Uh, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. Um, if you want to put a dark color down and a light one, I've done some like that. I think they look awesome. So when you hear somebody say, or there's a, you know, someone says that's the only way to do it, you do whatever the heck you want to do, right? Make yourself happy. If the piece comes out nice and you're happy, that's all that counts, right? So anyways, and I haven't, I haven't said this for a while either too, is, uh, is, you know, this is just advice. You know, so, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can either take the advice or do whatever you want or just glean out of what, what I do and take what you think you might want to try and what works for you. But by no means do I ever say that this is the, the only way out kind of thing. So anyway, here's the color. Uh, and I'm going to mix it probably just under under a half with some water. Actually, I'm just going to reposition my uh, camera here for a sec. Okay, there we go. A little less of me, a little more of the leaf. Okay. So you just want to give it a really good stir. I don't like it too loose. If it's too loose, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. But like I said, to each their own. So you can see it's sort of, it's quite runny. That Bear Premium is pretty thick stuff. Right, you can see how it just sort of runs off. It's probably about 35% water. I put in there 40% water. Give it a good stir. Then you want to have ready, either have a five gallon bucket or like a 16, 20 liter bucket full of cold water beside you or warm water, it doesn't matter. Just beside you and a bunch of sponges. I have behind me, I've got my big uh, wash basin. I have a bunch of these little sponges all ready to go in clean water. You'll need that, so you gotta have that all ready. I like to do this first thing in the morning, especially in the summer. Uh, if it's uh, you know too hot in the afternoon, you're painting, and if you're on a bigger project like the other one I just did, you run into a problem because you're only gonna get about halfway around, it's gonna start drying on the other side, and you don't want that, because it'll start, when you go to wipe it off with a sponge, you'll peel off too much of the paint. And then you gotta re reapply and do. I mean, it's not ruined. You just reapply and do it again. So anyway, um, big brush. Um, you could use a little brush. It just takes you a lot, lot longer, and you gotta move a lot faster. So uh, nothing too sexy about this. You just want to get it on. So like I said, I'm not gonna speed up the video or what, so you can see it in real time. Sort of see the whole process. If you want to just zip ahead. So you don't have to hear me yapping so much. You can do so. Uh, you want to make sure you get that paint right down into those deep crevices where it's running. Um, look for, before I start sponging, I like to go around it again and look for dry spots. Because uh, dry spots, they tend to stick out like a sore thumb after. So this is going to be a whole series, so uh, next step with these guys, I'm going to start doing some dry brushing. 
on both of these projects and uh, make sure I turn the camera on for that stuff so you can sort of see how I do that. As you can see it goes pretty quick. Uh, I like to make sure I get the edges too while you're painting. Uh, don't worry, like I said, don't worry about the bottom because you're going to be painting that afterwards. But the most important is, is the deep veins, the, the deep uh, cuts in the leaf. You want to make sure you get those all nicely filled in. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And then just give it a little spinorama to check. Yeah, I've got it on one of my little Lazy Susan dollies here. It just makes it easier. For you. So you're not running around the table in circles. So I'm just looking for dry spots. Hitting it. Make sure you get down in the center there. Okay, coverage looks pretty good. Okay, cool. So now, just move your stuff aside too. If you have other projects on the same table, you're going to want to cover them because this stuff can go flying everywhere. So, now I've got the sponges. They're wrung out really well. You don't want them with a lot of water in them. Like there should hardly be anything, see, coming out of there. Okay, make sure there's no other colors from a project that you just finished. Okay, and then you just start wiping, then turn, wipe, turn to the clean side again. Okay. Now, I can tell you, if you weren't dry brushing, I'll show you really fast here. Say you just wanted to leave some colors on the edges of the leaves, give it a wipe and then just don't take as much off up onto the top. See what I mean? Take it down from here, but leave more up by the tips seeing that the effect that sort of gives but I don't want that I want that all off so like you could do just do a two color wash right and leave more on the tips see how this is here like that and then when you get lots on you can go back and kind of blot you can if you think you want a little more touches see it add a little bit more paint there so I'm just going to give these a rinse again The advantage of these washes is that uh, it just really makes it pop, right? All the detail jumps right out of the leaf. And it's pretty quick, but you'll see. We're getting there. And like I said, for this one, I want to take off almost all of the paint. I just want the uh, I just want the veins covered. A little too much for my liking. And uh, like I said, I think I've done some other videos too on a wash that if you think, oh man, I've taken too much off, just go back with your brush, splash some more back on there, and away you go. The only time you're gonna run into problems if it starts drying and you do that, you're gonna have some issues. You'll start pulling the paint off on it. It'll peel off instead of rubbing off and it, it's not gonna look nice. Um, the other thing, I, I think I mentioned it before too, is when you put your base coat on, leave it overnight before you do it. Don't try and do this same day, even if your shop's really warm because what'll happen is that new paint you're putting on, it'll loosen that base coat off on the same day. And then too, you've got issues because then you, you're doing this and you're bringing up your base coat and then you see raw concrete underneath, which actually I've done before and sometimes it can look okay if you want it to look really rustic. Okay, so I'm almost there. I'm almost happy with this. Like I said, I want most of the the yellow to show through.
And this is what I do on my statuary as well. This is the same, exact same process that I do for color, two or three color wash. So I want this one. I'm gonna do it one more time. I want the center of this one as yellow as I can get it down to the and I can leave a little more on the outside but I want this part to be quite bright yellow okay and that's it folks how does that turn up on the camera there oh that looks pretty good but you can see what a what a change it's a dramatic change uh on, on this guy here like I, it just makes everything really pop and i'll just take the camera off here i'll show you the other one that i did this morning so this is the guy that was the terracotta guy you remember him and so what i've used is uh for the vein color and that is just a again an acrylic paint um like a burnt, I think it was a burnt umber or a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna's got a bit more reds in it. I think it was a burnt umber. Uh, again, it really pops the detail out on this, but this one's also gonna get about another three, four color dry brush on it there. But it's coming together, the two of them. But like I said, you can see it's a, what a dramatic difference uh, just a little color wash can do. And I'll catch you up to date with probably tomorrow, I'll start doing some dry brush. Okay, gang, see you.